Now, as the number of COVID-19 cases increase, mass screening and testing have also been on the rise. Currently, over 742 COVID-19 tests uh, have been, 742,000 uh, have been conducted throughout the country. Uh, to look at the screening and testing process, Professor Adrian Purin from the National Institute uh, for Communicable Diseases joins me now on Skype from Johannesburg. Professor, good morning to you. Let's talk about uh, the screening process. And when we talk about screening, of course, here, Prof, to put it in layman's terms, is when I maybe go to a mall and, you know, the, the, the fancy gadget is uh, flashed in front of me, it reads my temperature. Uh, that's what we're talking about when we talk about screening. Am I correct? And talk to me about the purpose of all of that. Yeah, so um, we certainly embarked on a community-wide um, assessment of what's actually happening in our various communities to identify cases of uh, COVID infection. And that was based on what we call, as you've already alluded to, measuring temperature, but also taking a note of particular symptoms. So the key symptoms would be, for example, um, fever, shortness of breath, for example. Those are, would be some of the key um, symptoms that are would identify you as a possible um, case, a suspect case, and based on those particular um, requirements, you would then be swabbed and a specimen taken for testing. That was the whole idea behind the community-based um, testing. There are certain limitations um, to that because, of course, on the day that you present, you may not have those particular symptoms. So, in fact, you would have to do it on, on the multiple uh, rounds of, of testing. So, I think. The strategy, as far as I can understand from Dr. Mkhize's recent uh, note, is that, in fact, some of that community-based testing may actually um, lessen uh, to, to a large extent while we focus on more um, severe cases that are certainly presenting to the hospital and also to identify healthcare workers and clusters where testing may be more um, efficient. And I think we're going to talk about um, why that, that, that some of those strategies are, are certainly critical. In, indeed. Okay, so that, that, that may lead to a person being referred to, that you say, okay, you, you, you display the symptoms. The next stage now is you need to go and get tested. So far, we've tested over 742,000 people uh, throughout the country. What, what are your thoughts on our testing methods and the strategy at the moment? So certainly, there was a great demand for, for testing, and I think the WHO has certainly recommended that. But I think what we've run into in part is that as we scaled up, there certainly have been uh, particular problems in terms of being able to carry out all those tests. And you've noticed from the official um, communications that, in fact, we have a, a rather severe backlog around uh, the, the, the testing, primarily based on, around the fact that we don't have the reagents to, to do the testing. So there are certainly limitations ar around that, and the utility of, of such scaled-up testing uh, becomes fairly, fairly obvious in terms of what you can do. So therefore, the idea is really to, to change the strategy and to focus on more, um, I think, more focused and targeted testing. And as I said, the healthcare workers are, are certainly critical. Individuals that pre uh, present to hospitals or facilities with severe um, uh, symptoms that need attention, as well as where we identify clusters and outbreaks. So, so the Western Cape is a good example. The Eastern Cape is a good example where you can then focus your, your testing around that. So I think the community testing has certainly provided um, important data. If we had the ability to continue some of those particular activities, I think it would be helpful. But I think now we really need to refocus and strategize our, our testing. Okay, so you're talking about cluster testing. You focus on a particular cluster if there's a, an outbreak within that cluster. But when you look at the uh, delay in getting results, that particular backlog, uh, that kind of defeats you know, the, the purpose because you're still waiting to see what's going on within that cluster either way. Yeah. So, well, if you um, stop some of the community level testing, in other words, reduce those activities and rather focus on the clusters, identify the individuals that have uh, tested positive and then do the track and tracing and isolation of those individuals, I think that will certainly uh, then improve the, the turnaround time that, that's required. So the lab must be in position to be able to say, well, this is community based testing. That's a lower priority. If it's a hospital based um, patient or a healthcare worker or from a specific cluster that's been identified, then that will be the, the focus of the testing in order to get those results out as, as soon as possible. You're quite right. We've seen marked um, increases in delays up to six, eight days, if not beyond that, 
And so that, that is concern. Therefore, we must be able to, when we triage the specimens, be able to identify what these specimens are in order for us to get these results out as soon as possible um, in order to, to manage the, the patients or the healthcare okay. workers. All right, so basically focus all resources on uh, uh, when we look at a particular area. All right, thank you so much, uh, Professor. Always good talking to you, Professor Adrian Purin there. Uh, he's from the uh, Communicable, the National Institute for Communicable Diseases.